Alright, so we are now at the first part of the central dogma of molecular biology and that is replication. In replication, we have DNA as our source and also DNA as our product. That's why replication can also be named as DNA directed because it is the source. DNA synthesis because it is also the product or the one being synthesized. Now, replication can also, uh, I mean, replication is composed of three parts if you, we try to analyze the entire process together, and that's initiation, elongation, and termination. So, in a nutshell, initiation will start trying to read where in the strand would the replication start. And then elongation is trying to further add amino acids, to, I mean amino acids, nucleotides to that starting point. You have the starting point but you need to um, add more nucleotide base pairs and that's the process of elongation and, it, and that cannot last forever. It needs to stop at a particular time. Nothing lasts forever guys. So it must also terminate, it must also stop at a particular point in the strand that was opened up during initiation and which has elongated over the process of replication. So starting off with initiation, we have here a double-stranded DNA strand. Alright, double-stranded DNA strand. Anyway, we have a double-stranded DNA helix here. Alright, and I drew it in two colors for it to be clearer. So they are again bonded together by their base pairs by von der Waals and hydrogen bonds. They should be um, opened up, all right? Because if they are not opened up, there is no particular nucleotide that would complement it in order for a new set of RNA to be made, all right? So it must be opened up, all right? And the name of that enzyme is known as helicase. Helicase. So helicase actually opens up the helix. Alright? So it's like it removes the the connections or the bonds between the bases. Alright? And it gives up a particular space here known as the replication bubble. And the replication bubble will be the site of the entire process. So let's say that the helicase started out here. Alright? Helicase started out here. There, there is a certain consequence here. All right. If you open up a replication bubble, there would be several um, instabilities going on. If you open the bubble here, the pressure at the bases here at the side, which are not part of the bubble, would be increased. Right. I mean, if if this was a zipper and you open this part of the zipper, the pressure on the remaining sides would increase. So you need to stabilize it in order to prevent the entire two strands from breaking apart. So that's exactly the purpose of two additional enzymes. All right. So the first would be DNA gyrase. All right. DNA gyrase would compensate for the torsional strain. That's the name of the strain produced by the bubble and increasing the pressure this one. So it relieves torsional strain. And at the same time, there are individual proteins that stabilize these ones here in the bubble so that they do not fall out of place. They do not disconnect from the, uh, from the bubble. All right? So the name of those proteins are single strand binding proteins all right? or the SSB. So they would look something like this for each nucleotide in the replication bubble they attach to them all right in order to prevent them from um, going out of hand due to the instability op by the opening of the replication bubble right as well as the gyrase here which stabilizes the remaining parts of the strand all right so of course you just open up the bubble but really there's nothing going on yet right you haven't introduced nucleotides first. So first thing is you need to introduce the very first nucleotide that would make up the second DNA, or me, that would make it replicate. All right, so there's an enzyme that would introduce the first, all right, the first strand, I mean the first nucleotide, and that is primase, all right? 
and primase actually introduces that nucleotide known as a primer a primer okay so remember that we are talking about DNA production but the primer here has RNA nucleotides meaning you have here nucleotides that belong to RNA and these have to be replaced by DNA nucleotides later on but let's talk about that later on but generally the moment you introduce the primers to the replication bubble it starts replication or the it finishes the initiation part of replication all right and now we go to the elongation part remember that we have two strands here but the thing is the enzyme responsible for elongation can only focus on one strand all right it 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 cannot go on both strands at the same time so we we're going to designate names for the strands all right and the name of the strand we're in the enzyme for elongation would focus on is this one uh, is the leading strand uh, the one in green so the name of this one is the leading strand because of course this is the one that should uh, be focused on by the elongation part it should lead in the elongation part and the one which is not the leading strand is known as the lagging strand all right so we we use a different diagram here to make it cleaner and elongation would start again with a primer here right and if it go on from the five prime end to the three prime end of the leading strand all right so meaning if we have the lagging strand here we start off here it's not the five prime end that's why the lagging strand really lags because you have to introduce now different uh different separate primers and they cannot really go on directly because you go from here to here but this one starts off at the three prime end so the enzyme for elongation would be confused i cannot put i cannot go through you straight so i'll just introduce small primers all right so like this one a small primer here and then another small primer but never really continually uh, going through the lagging strand in a straight direction and these small primers in the lagging strand all right are known as okazaki fragments right while for the leading strand there is no problem i just introduce the nucleotides together in this fashion no problem whatsoever all right the enzyme responsible for this one is dna polymerase All right, then a polymerase. All right, and it must be noted that this one is DNA polymerase three. All right, DNA polymerase three is the most common DNA polymerase for elongation part of the replication process. All right, there are additional stuff that we have to note here. Okay, DNA is vital for genetic expression, so it must be accurate. There is a possibility that the that the nucleotides that the DNA polymerase introduces might be wrong all right for example I should have put C instead of G but I put G instead all right and it must be proofread all right there must be proof reading capacity all right and the DNA polymerases are actually composed of different um, sub enzymes and one of those sub enzymes is 3 prime 5 prime exo nuclease and it's responsible for proofreading so how does it work from the name itself it reads in the direction of 3 prime to 5 prime so it starts from this one going back so it's just like proofreading you're going backwards just to see if you made a mistake and if it makes a mistake aha uh -huh, i'm going to correct you all right i'm going to correct you all right now another thing is you introduced a primer here all right you introduced a primer and remember that the primer here is an rna one while for dna polymerase the rest of the nucleotides we're going to use here are deoxy nucleotides so there's no problem but in the primer there's a problem because it's an rna primer so you have to replace that with a dna primer so the one that is responsible for the replacement of the dna prime i mean sorry of the dna nucleotide to the rna primer it's not a primer anymore right is the five prime three prime exo 
nucleus. Alright? So, these are the two exonuclease exonucleases responsible for um, the functions of DNA polymerase 3. In addition to the addition in addition to the placement of the actual DNA nucleotides. All right. So that's elongation for you and then for termination what you're basically what's going on here is for every new nucleotide there's already a phosphodiester bond being done. So what you see here this one in green and this one in red becomes the new DNA of the leading strand and the one here in red plus the one here in black becomes the DNA of the lagging strand. So if you start off with one DNA after replication, you have two DNA strands, but in the two DNA strands, each of those two have one half of the original DNA. So for example, in the leading strand, one half of its strand is the leading strand originally, and for the second DNA product of replication, one half of that is the original lagging strand. So you maintained one half of the original DNA in the next DNA, and that property is known as being semi-conservative alright you conserve semi or half of the original DNA in the new DNA you have produced from replication alright but we need to finish this one alright we need to finish this one so after elongation you now proceed to termination and this is what it looks like remember in the leading strand you go straight alright you go straight but in the lagging strand all right, here you have RNA primers. I just told a while ago that you have several RNA primers, not just one, because again, the lagging strand does not follow the direction of replication. You need to add rep uh, Okazaki fragments. All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to remove these <coughs> RNA primers or the Okazaki fragments by the process of NIC translation. And the one that performs most of that is DNA polymerase, but not 3 anymore, but DNA polymerase 1. Alright? And the particular exonuclease part of that is 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease. Just like in the 5' prime, 3' prime exonuclease of DNA polymerase 1, which does the replacement of the primers, remember, 5' prime to 3' prime replacement of primers in the replacement of Okazaki fragments for the lagging strand, we also have the 5' prime, 3' prime, <laughs> 3 prime exonuclease, this time of DNA polymerase 1. Alright, and um, there's also another special process to seal off the last phosphodiester bond, alright? There's a particular enzyme for that, and the name of the enzyme that does this is DNA ligase and once you have the DNA ligase uh, acting upon the last phosphodiester bond of the lagging strand all right we now have two complete DNA molecules again I said that this is semi-conservative in the first product DNA you have conserved the leading strand so the one in red is the one acted upon by the DNA polymerase one half original again and then in the second where you have the lagging strand you have conserved this time one half of the original DNA but this time it was the lagging strand but nevertheless it was still one half of the original DNA so again from one DNA after finally terminating the replication process you have two semi-conservative DNA Friends.